feel you. I feel you. So for those who might not know you that, you know, might have been under a rock for a while, tell us a little bit about Tariq Nasheed. Who is Tariq Nasheed? How did you come onto the scene? How do we how do we get to know you? Yeah, you know what's interesting, man? My whole career and in every field that I've been in, it's it's always been a reluctant type of thing. How I've never fields have you been in? I, you know, in the in the the book industry, mm-hmm. in the dating game industry, the relationship um, advice industry, the filmmaking industry, um, the R and B industry. Because we mm-hmm. we put out an R and B album. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah. Talk about so you know, yeah. so I started writing books. My first book was called The Art of Mackin. It was a dating book that I wrote in 1999. It came out in 2000. And I wrote it because a lot of folks, you know, here in LA, I was known to give people relationship advice and dating advice. And people kept trying to bug me about doing a book. And we put the book out. And wait, I see somebody in the chat room said the book is on pimping. I've never in my life written a book on pimping. The Art of Mackin is not about pimping anybody. It was a dating book that talked about how to just have a tight mouthpiece. None so of my you've never so so you've never been a pimp, just to be clear. Never, never in my life. Never okay, in my life. I feel I like I I've heard that swirling and around somewhere in the universe that you were formerly a pimp at one time. So that's yeah, not that's, true. No, it's not true. You at just all. offered Mac advice. Right, right. And if you read the books, the books oh, are shit, I, I, yeah. I, I could I could have did that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, yeah, I the never pimp are, nobody. But I exactly. offer some Mac advice. Hell yeah. Exactly. The books are out there. I mean, hell, show the page where it said pimping somebody. Pimping is very specific. What, what? You track. So none of my books, not one, none of my books have ever, ever been about that at all. And I think what people made you know feel I, like you were qualified to give Mac advice. Um, just by learning a lot of um techniques on how to be a salesman to a certain degree. Um, I, I would read a lot of books about sales and you know, I would read books like thinking, um, um, what's that book? I want to say think and grow rich. It's one of those old school, some of those old school sales type of books and some of those old school books about, um, positive reinforcement and all that. Mm-hmm. And all of that, everything is about sales. You're, you're trying to sell yourself. You're trying to present I've read yourself. sales books myself. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm, the dating mm-hmm. game is the same thing. You're trying to sell yourself to a certain degree to, and when I did that book, The Art of Mac, and that kicked off a few years later, the PUA thing. And I've never considered myself a PUA. That means a pickup artist. Uh, um, yeah, a lot of the white guy, that pickup artist was basically the white version. There was a whole little show about that, right? It like, was, like, yeah. White boys trying to teach their little, how, what was they calling them, negs and shit like that? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A lot they, of they, them. They try to name the moves and shit. Yeah, they, they would get my early books and put all of these other little technical terms on them and, you know, the neg and the uh, all that stuff. So they, they did the whole little PUA thing for a minute. And um, I did a relationships books for women. I did a book called Player Be Played. So my books did real good. I, I had a, a few bestsellers. Um, my first book was a New York Times bestseller. So the book thing really took off. Um, then we started doing a lot of stuff on television. I did a lot of dating shows on MTV and VH1. And for a long time, they were trying to give me my own television show. Now, I've never really been too, too interested in that type of thing. I've been always been a kind of a low key guy, but people have always sought my advice on certain things. But one thing I noticed when I was doing the relationship books, a lot of people would ask me racial questions. The racial thing kept popping up. I, mm. will this game work for a white guy? If a black guy goes to a club, what will happen if I talk to a girl and she's this race? And just the, the racial element just kept popping up. And you was like, her. why do they keep asking me this shit? Yeah, why, why do they keep asking about the racial element? And I wanted to dig deeper into the whole racial thing. And I've always been a person who's been conscious. I've been a big fan of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing and a lot of these people for a long time. And I said, look, we need to really talk about the race thing and really talk about it for real, for real. In in some of my books, I talk about the racial element of dating. But I said, we need to do a project that really delves into the race thing, because everything we do, we always go back to race, racism. That's a constant in everything. 
And in 2010, I just got off tour. I'd done a, a lecture tour, very successful lecture tour, talking about dating and relationships. And a lot of movies were out at the time. The Precious movies, the, 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 the Help, a lot of these movies that were showing us as slaves and a lot of people were saying, hey, we need to have movies that reflect our real history, who we really are as black people. And nobody was doing it. People kept saying, how come Tyler Perry don't do it? How come this person don't do it? How come that person don't do it? And my thing is, my thing is, if, if nobody's going to do it, we just got to do it ourselves. So I, me working nice. in television, yeah, me working in television, being around the, the industry, I knew editors, I knew um, cameramen, and I knew some things from being behind the scenes. And I came up with the concept of doing a documentary. And there were different ways I was going to do it. First, the documentary was going to be just me talking about history. Then I said, oh, let me let me do something better than that. Let me get me and let me get a bunch of people that I love and respect, like Dr. Welsing, um, Shahrazad Ali, Brother Kaba Kamene, James Small, Claude Anderson. Let me get all these people and see if they'll be down to do this. And we're just trying to think of a name of it. The first name of the movie was going to be called Secret Niggas. Mm. And I, uh, I want to get it played in churches. If we do a documentary, I want to get this thing played in churches. I don't know if and they're going to play Secret Niggas. Secret Niggas. Secret Niggas. So we, we kicked around some names and we came up with Hidden Colors. We came mm. up with Hidden Colors and we did the Hidden Colors film. We put it out. 2011. I didn't know what the reception was going to be. I had no idea. This was the first time a film like that had been done, talking about real history of Black people globally without white funding. Mm. There was no white funding in that shit. That's the mm. very important part. Right. So we're going hard. We're going very hard in the paint on this thing. So we put it out. I remember being in the theater the, the opening night, and I don't know how people are going to react to this thing. So I'm in the very front row with a hat on like this, you know, just in case this shit is whack. <laughs> and they're looking for the and they looking for the motherfucker who made this shit. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, if they don't like this shit, I'm about to slither up out of here, get some popcorn, and go see uh, <laughs> Roots Part Three or whatever. So the movie I'm gonna was do the mink slide for real in this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, you did. So man, after the movie, man, people sat there. Folks, first people were frozen. They were like mm. shocked. Like, what the hell did we just watch? And then all of a sudden, everybody just gave a round of applause, a standing ovation, and people loved it. And nobody wanted to leave the theaters. And I saw this all around the country. After they watched Hidden Colors, everybody would just stay in the movie theaters all night, damn near, and just talk and just kind of right. deep themselves to a certain degree over mm -hmm. this information. And it just took off from there, man. And it, it's been a great thing. 